ask. Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. We're coming to you with Paul John Classic. Select, select cast. Oh, I was going to even hit it. Oh, I thought I you was paused. I, paused. I was. I was. I was going to say select. But we're going to test it. I had blown that three times. Test it! So, we're in. We kept that one. Most people would think we would reshoot that. Why? Exactly. <laughs> That's actually what I said. Let's reshoot it. Let's, he said, yeah, he's, no, leave it. That's good. The select cask. So what does that mean? Well, they okay, so they've just got kind of their core range. Right. And then the select cask series are cask strength whiskeys uh, up a, the next tier from their entry. And Paul classic is they're going for a classic flavor profile? I think just, yeah, just straight. See, that's, that's bourbon, why was, bourbon cask. So, I mean, uh, feel the tropical tastes of Goa from the first whiff and taste of this masterfully crafted Indian single malt marketing marketing. Uh, notes of barley, we won't get into all that. I wanted to see if they even explained the classic and they really don't. They just get into their tasting notes. That was the one thing that I gotta admit, if I was looking at it on the shelf, what does classic mean? Select cast, I don't know. Well, they'll have it up, you know, they're gonna have the edited, they're gonna have the bold, um, and there's one other in their core range, and then you've got the select cast, so. They do have, and I Higher think I ABGs. took it off one of them, they've got this beautiful little, like, hanger yeah, real, tag. real thick little. Yeah, and I sure. did read that, and uh, that explains a few more things. 55.2%, by the I way. I love the high ABV, and again, they have batch number four. Manufacturer date is 4 April 17, so I like that too. 55.2, I know you said. Now, there is something else, though, that you mentioned on this one, even when you handed it off to me. Do you remember what you said to do with it? Yes. And what have we done here today with it? Give it some time. Let it get some <laughs> air and breathe. We, and there's a chupacabra. We gave it some time. By the way, I have 423 oh, coin. 422. That's the and we have a Scotch three. God shout out to do as well. We From do. Duncan Harmsworth. Duncan. On the bracket three of our March Pete Madness. Ooh, that's been fun. Bart, great call on the Nadura. First of all, I like the way Duncan talks. If I was a commentator, I would say in my most nasally voice. Mm, I've read this one. Now, as we end the third round with only one round to go, it appears that Ardbeg has doubled down and is favored to win. <laughs> Does Kill Homan have the cask strength to, to take the win? It might. Or will the foot forward Nadura sock it to the competition and race to the finish? Dirty Stay socks. Tuned. Dirty socks. <laughs> I thought that, that was, was good from good. Duncan. Yeah. That was real good. I liked it. And by now, that when this has come out, they know the winner. They know the overall oh, winners right. that we've had. Yep. So they know. We could that. talk about it. Do we want to risk it? We know it. That's we out. know it. Kill Homan shocked me. Kill Homan cast strength and the Ardbeg Dark Coast. I picked the Kill Homan. I, going into the 16, I did not think that Kill Homan was going to finish. And did Lafroigs, any of my Lafroigs, get into the final for me? Nope. Did Ardbegs? Yes. Yes. Three of them. Three. Of yes, them. that's crazy. I've always seen myself as a Lafroy guy, and that, and I always, I love the Ardbeg, but I always thought they were a little more ashtray. And then blind, what do I do? I pick three different Ardbegs, and the Kilhoman, and the Kilhoman wins in the final. Unbelievable. I'm telling you, uh, those blind shoot. If you're not doing some blind tasting, do it. Get a buddy. Have a whiskey club. Try things blind. Your expectations, what you do when you come in, does influence you. All right, now we've let it sit. I know you're about ready to shut me down. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, that's enough. That's I enough. just let you go sometimes. All right, well, yeah, and then you make faces at the I, camera. I haven't velvet Elvis to you right. for a long time. I need, to do that. I need to do that once in a you while. You should. The fans do. But yeah, I, I will you watch. Know, you don't know when to stop. You just keep going. Well, I'm on, like when I get on a roll. After, yeah. But I'll see right. you later in post. Yeah. I'll be editing, and you're making like eyes and stuff. You're, doing all, you're looking at it like, is he going to, for the love of Pete, shut up? What do you got on the nose? <laughs> <laughs> what I remember when I uh, we were on the phone when I first opened this and I was talking to you and you remember what I said what I said at first it smells like a bourbon he, he, that yes I do remember that cinnamons vanillas I thought honey. you said pumpernickel no <laughs> okay I made that up you did say it smells Oak, like a bourbon and a little bit of a cigar tobacco on the nose right do you get a I get an old dusty floor wood floor 
in a barn that's like two days old. <laughs> He's mocking me. There's a little mocking. Um, no. See, I get a real dryness on this nose. You're right. I get the vanilla. I get some oak. But, I mean, I get a really, really, I mean, what I, if I was just, hey, what do you got? Dry wood. That's it. You know, after I told you, though, it smelled like a bourbon. In the notes on the back, it says a bourbon manuka honey licorice mix forms. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what manuka what is the manuka? Is that a, I think that's like a skateboard wax. <laughs> that's carnuba. Carnuba wax. Uh, nice citrus, sweetness, honey, cinnamons. I already put it in my mouth. Mm -hmm, I know. Oh. Mm. That's what I was talking time. while you were tasting. Mm. It's, I got a flavor explosion. Mm. Wow. Ooh. It is a little astringent in the finish. I'm going to have to come back to the open because, wow, that, that really... Opening, wow. you've mm -hmm. got to let this sit. When I sampled this earlier, not today, but a few days ago, I didn't let it sit long enough, didn't let it open up. Wow. Mm. You're right, I yeah. get honey. Mm. I get like a, um, oh, like a thick, rich, dark honey. Cheerios again that I got on the, the uh, on the peated Paul sure. John. Yeah, maltiness. Wow. There's a very slight barrel char smoke on this. Not as much burn as I expected for 55%. Very smooth. Mm. The maltiness of the Cheerios, oats. There's something on the forefront that I can't pin down. There's tropical notes with it as mm. well. Mangoes. Right. Pineapple. Yeah, well, mango I get. Um, wow, almost like a, uh, a syrup on the sweetness as I move into the middle palate. The astringency is high in the cheek, above, on my gums, roof of my mouth. The finish for me drops off sharp, but it leaves a hint of like, mm. a hint of maybe a caro syrup. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, corn syrup, basically. Confectioner sugar. Okay. Yeah. And I even get a little bit of, because of the dryness, that powdered sugar sweetness mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. The the opening explosion of flavor, I'm going to have to hit again. Those tropical fruit notes again. Mangoes. Mm. Pineapple. Mm. Papaya. No. Juicy fruit. Yeah. Maybe it's just that ABV that's bursting in the beginning. I mean, I get this like, and then it, and then it settles, settles down. It's a 55.2, and it might just mm. be that alcohol mm. burst at the beginning. But the way it settles in is really intriguing. Hmm. Actually, when, I, when, I first, when we first cracked the bottle and poured it, I tasted it. I thought, yeah, that's about, it's okay, about an 87. I'm going to say that's exactly, I was just going to tell you the same thing, that uh, you've got to let this open you've, up. You've got to give it some time, and this has been out for about an hour. You're right. Um, I'm wondering what this bottle is going to be like as we take it down below the halfway point. Um, I did see your score. Uh, I would have told you the same thing. It was going to be below a 90, and I'm going to... I'm going to say it's right at a 90 for me right now. And it was, in my mind, it was going to be a little lower than that from my prior tasting. Mm -hmm. I like the, uh, so the things I like, I like that opening explosion, what I think is the high ABV, the transition into that sweet, very viscously sweetness. And then the way it, as it finishes, it moves into the astringency. Mm -hmm yet leaves that powdered sugar sweetness kind of behind. That honey sits there. There are the citrus notes. And there, there's some complexity here that I will tell you I didn't get the first time I sampled. Water doesn't hurt it. I've added two or three drops of water to it. It still tastes, it still tastes high, mm. high ABV. This is one that I probably should have, but I didn't. I would, this one I would like to reduce, you know, on a quiet night, everybody's in bed, and I just 
take it down continually with water until I even get well below a natural ABV just to see what I'm picking up here. What's a natural ABV? 40% it was kind of the minimum that you could sell it for. I guess there is no natural ABV. Yeah. That would be cash strength. <laughs> for, but I'll take them sometimes down to around 30, which is way watered down. I don't like to drink them at that. But when I'm sampling or trying to pull out flavors and I'm making notes, I'll, I'll really bring that ABV down low just to see what I can get. I think this is one, the more water, the lower that gets, the more the tropical fruits are going to come out. And I, I didn't do it, so I would need to. Hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. I'm going to tell you, I don't like it with the water. It kind of... Uh, it settled down that first explosion, I think, because that mm. was ABV lead. Give it some time, give it some air, and I think as the bottle gets down a little bit, you won't have to do that. And I got a little bit more maltiness because of it too. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. I I just got your Cheerio note. Mm. The toasted, mm -hmm. the toasted oats. Oats. Isn't that interesting? I didn't get that until I had water. Okay, I'm gonna have to spend. A little more time with this. Hmm. All right. Is it worth it? How much uh, sim you... Similar to the peated ninety ninety five dollar range. Uh, this was a, this is another review bottle that was uh, sent to us. Um. I I think it's worth. I don't think if, I think if I spent that I wouldn't be disappointed in it at all. I would like it at seventy. Sure. I mean that's just what I'm saying. Um. But it's um. Uh, I mean it's tasty. I like the fact that I I I'm. Looking forward to going back and playing around with this a little bit and sampling it some more, and and uh, it's, it's worth it. I, I would like it at seventy, but at that ABV, we're looking at a real strong ABV. So I I, I concur, it's worth it. I like what Amrud is doing. I like what Paul John is doing. Mm -hmm. Both Indian malts, both really good. Well, Indian malts are coming into their own. They're definitely if you haven't sampled them, go out and give them a shot. It's uh. I, I definitely, I mean, if somebody was wondering where are they sitting at, they definitely need to be near Scotch. They're not Scotch, but they're not, I would put them closer to the Scotch family, obviously, than a bourbon family. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and it's in more in that realm where you're going to get that, that Scotch-type experience with it. So, interesting. Mm -hmm. What do we have? Do you have a traveling dummy? Do you want to do mine at uh, Times Square? Are we back to the walleye killer? Uh, we are. We are. I'm going to throw it up. Wow, that didn't sound appealing at all. <laughs> so we're going, boom! We're at Times Square. You're looking at it right now yes. just so you can see it. Same. We've got we got a little bit of rain. It's it's a cloudy, looks like a cloudy, cold day. You guys are still looking at this now. But uh, I love that uh, we've got our Cast 3 coin coming to you guys. Tr virtual traveling dummies, Times Square. New York City. Still want the Brandenburg Gate. Somebody in Germany get busy. So, mm. all right, we're back on us. What do you got? What do you want to do? You want to do some uh, some some yelling? Yep. Is it two dollars a quarter? How many? Just one. Well, we're gonna start there. Okay. What, <laughs> you name it. I can't read that. Mark part. Brown. Mm? Mark. Brown. Brown. Thank you for in. becoming a Patreon Woo! supporter. We should all support a raster. We, well, we, we fell behind with the Pete. We were shooting the Pete um, brackets in the championship. We right. weren't doing Patreon shout outs with those. We, we got some catching up to do. We knew those shows ran long anyway. We try to keep them pretty clean. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we're, we're getting into them now. We had a lot of Patreon supporters coming in uh, recently. Uh, the other thing is. Uh, well, go ahead and name another one before I get into the cards. Chris David. Another one dollar supporter. Oh, one dollar. So that's yep. just a, Chris David? Chris David. David. He's like Thank a you, double Chris. first name guy. Yep. Chris David. wonder what his middle name is. And James Van Fleet. Ooh, I love the Van Fleet. Yep. It's a fun name to say. Yeah. Van Fleet. Thank you, James. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks, Van Fleet. Another one dollar supporter. The Chupacabra supports you as well. well. She. Yours she. is a he. That's right. I own it. All right. I don't know yeah. what... Hey! Plots! Probably the male person. Right there, you want to close it out? Yeah, uh, we'll cut it. Do you want to? Okay. Uh, oh, hey. All right. Oh. Scotch it, <laughs> you Scotch guy. Solange. Dummies. <laughs> One last little. Roof, roof. 